Hey YouTube, Ian from Big Rock Adventure. So what I thought we'd do today is give you an update on the build on my KTM 500 EXC 2020 model and talk about how the bike's kind of working out for me in the first few weeks, uh, go through some of the mods I've done even though I'm not quite done yet and just give you a summary. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I guess I've had this bike for maybe six weeks, eight weeks, something like that. Uh, my life is kind of messy right now and I don't have a ton of time to ride, but I have put a few hundred miles on it. And uh, But I've spent a lot of time doing modifications and things as you can see. So, you know, I've had EXCs in the past. I've had a 525, I've had a 500, 2014 model, I've had a 690. So I kind of know what I like. I kind of know what I'm trying to build. And what I'm trying to build here for me, I only have two motorcycles. I have this motorcycle and I have my 1200 GS. So I, this has to be an all around off-road dual sport bike for me. Everything from single track to, you know, fast desert sections to sand to steep hills uh, and everything in between. So I really have to build it to be all around. My initial impressions of the bike so far, and I've shared some of this in my other videos, but it's just a bit more refined, quieter, smoother, um, better handling and better suspension than the previous uh, EXCs. So. Go watch my video on all the changes for the 2020. Um, you'll wanna see that and uh, to go in detail on all the changes. But overall, I am very, very happy uh, with the 2020 bike. Uh, but let's go through and talk about some of the changes that I've made to make it work for the kind of riding that I do. Okay, let's talk about how I've set this bike up to suit exactly how I like to ride. So let's start with some of the protection things I've done to it. So I have the KTM, uh, factory hard parts skid plate which is plastic and i think it works just fine um, actually it came with my bike because my bike is a six days bike um, you know you could get a skid plate with more protection so i'll, I'll consider that but it, it works pretty well really easy to drop for oil changes um, this is a p3 max coverage um, exhaust heat shield protection and i like this because it protects from impacts from the trail it protects your pants from getting burnt on the exhaust you can see it covers this whole thing all the way up here and it installs real easily it looks awesome and uh, i had a p3 on my last ktm uh, and i love these things i highly recommend that um, i've got the little brake saver uh, wire here which prevents your brake get from getting ripped off Got the stock KTM uh, sort of frame guards. I've got these Polysport swing arm protectors, which I like a lot. They protect from scratches and dings and stuff on your swing arm. Um, they're pretty cheap. They come in different colors and uh, I think they look great and they work great. For hand guards, I went with the Tusk Deflex Pro and we'll talk more about the hand guards and the handlebars uh, in a few minutes. But I've had really good experience with the Tusk hand guards on a lot of different bikes and they come at a really good price point and are really tough. So I'm happy with those. I do need to get some radiator guards. I'm probably gonna get the bulletproof designs radiator guards because some other things I will be adding for protection. I'm gonna add a rear disc uh, guard from Tusk and I'm gonna get a front disc brake protector as well, just to protect the brake disc from smashing into rocks and things like that. So pretty simple on the protection stuff. Um, let's talk about, oh, I also did the engine, the Acerbi um, engine covers on both sides. I really like these because they protect from impacts, rocks and things like that, but also they're gonna keep your cases from getting all scratched and dinged up, which kinda, if you take these off a long time down the road, your engine's still gonna be nice and shiny and new instead of all scratched up. So that's kinda nice. I'll show you the other side. There's the ignition side cover, so that looks really nice. You can see the other swing arm protector here on this side. So in terms of suspension, I have the stock suspension. Um, I talked about this in my last videos, but they've improved the suspension a lot for 2020 and uh, the valving and things like that are better. I find it to be excellent for me. I'm weigh 180 pounds. I'm a, 
a moderately aggressive rider and all kinds of terrain and it works beautifully for me i have no intentions to ever change it i have no complaints about it um, you know i know some guys complained about the suspension on the 17 to 19s um, but i have not owned one of those generation my 2014 was before they came out with the wp explorer so i like the suspension for the 20 it feels awesome but i don't have a ton to compare it to so maybe take that with a grain of salt um, one thing i do highly recommend is set your sag per the per ktm specs which you can find in a manual set your riding sag um, and then if you're if you're a real heavy rider you know you're going to have to change the spring rates obviously but it's set up well stock for my weight at 180. Um, comfort and controls and things like that so you can see that i've got i've got a seat concepts comfort xl seat so the comfort xl is the widest one they make and i recommend getting this one because the standard comfort seat from seat concepts is not really wider enough from stock to make a huge difference for me i mean it's better than stock and i had the standard comfort on my last 500 because they didn't have the XL back then but now that I have the XL I'm super super happy with it the thing is it's wide back here where you sit and it's still narrow enough up in the front so I, I highly recommend getting that seat if you're going to ride this bike anything longer than like an hour because I was dying after like an hour of being on this thing so for luggage for my day rides that I do and that's what I do with this bike is just really just day ride trail riding dual sport desert single track stuff like that I've got the giant loop uh, Mojave saddlebags which provide enough capacity to, to carry tools and tubes and food and snacks and things that you need for day rides they it mounts really easily with the straps to the frame i actually um, the rear you know they come with a with like a fender clip but i don't use those what i did was i actually drilled or cut um, slits in the rear fender and ran ran a webbing strap down through there and attached it that way that way this thing is is super stable now here um, and you don't have those clips popping off like the like they they can so i recommend that you can see here it just straps straps to the frame there um, i love the bags i also like the wolfman enduro style bags those are a good bag too i've got the tusk the small tusk olympus tank bag i had this on my gs before but I bought the large Olympus when they came out with it for the GS and then I put this on here. It works good. It doesn't get in my way too much. You can kind of see the profile here. Um, you know, if you're really picky off-road, super aggressive, you might complain about it. But you know what? I like it. It gives me plenty of place to store all the stuff I need for, for rides, you know, maps, you know, a rag to wipe my goggles, hat, um, you know, tire gauges, extra gloves, goggles, things like that. So really, really happy with that. I just I mount it um, through the frame up here and then down straps to the frame rail, super easy. Now I've got the stock rear light setup. I know guys complain about this or it breaks off or something, but here's what you need to do. You need to take two bolts with fender washers and drill through the upper fender and down through the inner fender here. So you can see where the whole tail light attachment um, transitions here to this. So what you wanna do is make sure here is where you're bolting through. This reinforces this whole rear section. And now it's really strong because before that I had these crappy little screws here and these, these bolts way up here, but that's not enough. So reinforce it like this and I think you will be happy. I also trimmed off the reflectors here to just save weight and make it look cleaner. I like the stock rear lights. They're bright, they're effective, uh, turn signals work great. And unless this breaks off someday, I'm gonna stick with it. I don't see the need to buy an aftermarket setup. Let's talk about handlebars. So I mentioned the flex bars. So I've got the Tusk handguards mounted with their Tusk adapters that have the pivot here to the flex bars. But now flex bars, I absolutely adore these things. I've had them on my 690 and I bought them almost right away for this 500. They basically provide suspension for your upper body and your arms. So all the trail chatter, the ruts, the rocks, the roots, it absorbs uh, a surprising amount of it. You can, they give you three different um, elastic Customers here. I run the softest ones, which I prefer because it's really cushy, but you can run hard, medium, soft, which gives you different levels of suspension. The thing to remember about the flex bars is they flex in the direction of travel of your suspension. So you're basically just adding to the suspension of your bike. You're reducing arm pump, reducing fatigue. You also reduce vibration on the highway. You don't feel nearly as much vibration because you've got the, you're isolated now from, um, from the engine vibes with these uh, elastomeric things. I cannot recommend them enough. They're an expensive modification to do, but uh, you know what? I will always have these on any dual sport or dirt bike that I ever own. They're that good. Um, 
Now I have also gel grips. These are ProGrip 714 gel grips. I put these on all my bikes. They're fatter, they're grippier, they're cushy, they reduce vibration. They're just more comfortable for riding all day. I hate the stock grips that come on most motorcycles. You can see I've also got the Double Take Adventure mirror. I love this mirror. I don't like the round one that they sell. I much prefer this Adventure one. Uh, one thing that did happen was I bought this kit from Rocky Mountain and the way that they have it packaged for the 500 is they give you the short um, arm because I guess they're thinking that you don't you want to be low profile for a dirt bike, but it didn't put the mirror out far enough that I could see behind me really at all. So I had to go ahead and order this longer mirror. Um, I mean, sorry, this longer uh, Ram uh, arm, which comes with a lot of the kits out there. Like when I got this for my 690, it came with this length, but for the 500, they give you the shorter one. So I went ahead and ordered that. I changed that out and now that's much, much better. These mirrors are indestructible. They have a lifetime warranty. They work great and they, you can adjust the tension here and just fold them in um, when you're on the trail, fold them down, whatever. I recommend these. The stock mirrors are just throwaway. You just junk. So let's talk about the fuel tank. So the fuel tank is an Acerbi four gallon, or I suppose they, I think they call it 3.9 gallon fuel tank. Um, it looks pretty stock. It mounts up real easily. You put your stock fuel pump in it. Um, it doesn't take long to put on. It doubles, almost doubles your fuel capacity from 2.2 up to four gallons. You can see how they've added the capacity by going wider, by increasing the height of it. You can see actually the seat now tucks in under and then the fuel tank kind of rises up a little bit if you don't if you're not going on a long ride then just don't fill this top part if you're worried about being top heavy i don't really notice it but you know some people are picky uh this is great now because my bike is stock in terms of power mods i get 60 miles a gallon and i can i can ride over 200 miles on a tank um probably well over 200 miles since i'm getting 60 miles a gallon Awesome modification. Uh, I have to do a larger tank on an EXC for me because I do longer rides, adventure type rides, and two gallons is just not enough. So that was an easy change out. Highly recommend the Acerbi tanks. Had one on my last 500 as well, and uh, no, no issues with them. Okay, let's talk about lighting. So on the lighting front, what I did was I went ahead and I bought a Baja Designs XL80 light kit with a dimming switch. The XL80 is a tremendously powerful racing light. It has over 9,000 lumens of light. Um, it is expensive, but you get what you pay for. This thing will probably last forever. It's super tough. Uh, the high-low dimmer works with the stock switch. Um, you do have to buy the dimmer. You do have to buy the dimmer as an extra, but that's not a big deal. Plugs into your stock wiring. Uh, the only problem I have with it, and it's not so much a problem with the light, it's with the, the stock KTM mount is not good enough. Um, what happens is, you can kind of see in here, so the stock uh, mount, it slides around, it doesn't get tight enough, and it doesn't allow the light to be aimed properly. The light's shining up too high, which is a problem for oncoming traffic. And so I'm going to go ahead and get the moto-minded light amount for it, which bolts to your stock headlight mask, but then gives you a lot better flexibility, just a much sturdier mount. The stock mount is not adequate for the XL80, in my opinion. So if you're gonna get a Baja Designs headlight, just go to Moto Minded and just buy one of their kits straight away. I bought this thinking, oh, I'll just use the stock mount, but it's not good enough. And you can see it also kind of interferes. I had to trim the headlight mask because it, it doesn't really fit right. You can see how much this moves. I have the screw tightened as far as I can. It tightens into plastic. And so if you're gonna strip it out, if you tighten it too much. So anyway, just get the Moto Minded mount and, and you'll be set. Okay, let's talk about the plastics. You, I mean, I probably should have started with this because it's the most obvious change, but this was a six days bike. Um, well, it is a six days bike, but it doesn't look like it anymore. And the reason I took off the stock plastics is simply that when I go to sell the bike someday, I can put the brand new stock six days stuff back on. It looks amazing, it looks factory, and then the resale value will be really great. So I put those in a box. I bought the Acerbi uh, full plastic kit, um, which Rocky Mountain sells, and I bought it all in black. So you can see everything from the you know, the uh, fork guards to the fender, the headlight mask, radiator shroud, side panels, rear fender, everything. It was like 130 bucks or 140 bucks, super, super affordable plastics. I, I tried to black the bike out. I think it looks pretty, pretty badass. I did go with, I did change the, uh, sh the radiator shrouds to this one with the orange accent in the middle because I thought that looked kind of cool. Um, so I did have to replace that because I didn't want the whole thing being black. So that was easy. I think the orange looks really nice with the accents here 
on the triple clamps and the frame and things like that. So anyway, let me know what you guys think, but I like the black with a small amount of orange. I think it looks kind of custom and unique, but you know, everyone has different taste. So I think that's kind of it for my initial mods. I mean, I've talked about my initial impressions of the bike, but uh, this is, you know, obviously a super high-end premium dual sport bike. It's got tons of power, it's smooth, it's refined. It's, um, yeah, I mean, for an EXC anyway, it's, uh, the suspension is awesome, the chassis is awesome. For 2020, they handle better, the weight's lower, the frame's all new, the suspension's all new. I mean, if you have the budget and you wanna buy, build yourself or buy the ultimate dual sport bike, I don't think you can go wrong with this thing. I was close maybe to getting a Honda CRF450L, but I've had such a long, good history, a great history with KTM that I kinda of wanted to stick with them and you just can't go wrong with it. Plus this bike is like 30 pounds lighter than a Honda, so, and they have tons of aftermarket support. So do I recommend the 2020 EXC? Yes. Um, my life is a little bit messy right now, so I haven't had a ton of time to ride, but I've got a few hundred miles on it and I just absolutely love it so far. It's like floating on air going down the trails. It's uh, Now I know a lot of people we're gonna talk about power mods and oh, you have to do all these mods, change the ECU, change the exhaust, you know, take out the reeds. I think that's all kind of BS. I mean, for 2020, they improved everything. It runs so much better at low RPM. It doesn't stall and flame out. Um, it's, it's plenty powerful. Now there's a lot of hidden potential. That is true. You can unlock 10 or 15 horsepower by changing the intake, the exhaust cap, uh, getting a different ECU or, ch or piggyback ECU. And that's fine. I may do that eventually, but the power is not holding me back. It's plenty fast to get me killed. It'll pull up to 90 miles an hour pretty quickly as it is. It gets 60 miles a gallon, which gives me a 240 mile range with a four gallon tank. You just can't ask for much more than that. So I'm kind of hesitant to go and play with the power mods. Um, I did do one minor thing, which is take the screen out of the, the exhaust. It kind of holds the heat in and holds in the sound. So I just cut the screen out and that, that helps quite a bit. Um, the bike doesn't overheat. It runs pretty cool. I did put on the, the little coolant uh, sensor or thing from uh, Tusk, which is nice. You can see your temperature. I'm gonna have a ton more videos on the 500 uh, continuing this build. I've got quite a bit more stuff to do. I've gotta add disc protectors. I've gotta add some, some other parts to the bike. I'd like to get a steering damper. Um, I gotta change the tires. That's the other thing. The TKC80 tires are not working for me at all. They obviously are on here for some sort of noise standard that they have to pass uh, to make the bike street legal, but they're, but they're junk for, for the dirt. So gonna have to change the tires uh, to a dirt tire. So yeah, that's kind of it for now. Um, I hope you guys found this useful. Let me know what you think in the comments, questions, if you wanna have a discussion about it, if you have questions about the 2020 or any of the mods that I've showed. I pay for all these parts myself. I don't have any sponsorships or discounts or anything. So I paid full price for everything you see. So my, my opinion is really unbiased and just how I feel about it. We're gonna have a ton more videos on the 500. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Stay tuned, ride safe. Thanks for your support and we'll see you out on the trail.